Hello friends, my name is Dheeraj Vaidya from WallStreetMojo.com. This is part 10 of our ratio analysis video series and in this installment we learn all about inventory turnover ratios. In simple terms, inventory turnover ratios help in measuring the efficiency of the company with respect to managing its inventory stock in order to generate sales. So in this tutorial, we basically have four objectives. Number one, understand what inventory turnover ratio means. Number two, what is formula and the calculations. Number three, look at inventory turnover ratios of Colgate, calculate it in the Excel. And number four is basically its interpretations. So before we jump into the tutorial, a quick reminder for you. We will be needing all the working files of Colgate case study for this video. So if you haven't downloaded it yet, please do so from the description link below. And also to keep yourself updated with the investment banking and core finance concepts, please do subscribe to our channel Wall Street Mojo. So let's get started. What is inventory turnover ratios? Inventory turnover ratios is a part of the ratio analysis framework and it comes under the category of turnover ratios. Turnover ratios is used to understand how the assets of the company are, uh, how efficiently the assets of the company is used to generate sales. So within this category, there are subcategories. We have discussed the receivables turnover. We also discussed the day's receivables in our previous videos. Now we'll discuss what is the inventory turnover ratio. Inventory turnover ratio basically tries to understand how efficiently the inventory of a company is uh, utilized to generate sales. So um, now uh, this was the literal meaning. Like, now think of the inventory, right? You know, when you as a company purchase inventory, that would be like a raw material inventory, right? So you might uh, work on it to process and make it as a final product. So the work in progress inventory is the part where you are working on that raw material inventory and then there will be a finished goods inventory where uh, the product is ready in the final stages where uh, you can actually sell it to the customers so uh, generally the company takes a lot of time to purchase you know work in progress and take it to the finished goods right and after the finished goods there would be a selling process so all of this takes time right so inventory turnover ratios actually helps us understand how much uh, time or how efficiently the inventory is being used to convert into finished goods and then from the finished goods to sales. So that's that's the literal meaning of inventory turnover ratios. How do you calculate the inventory turnover ratios? Let us uh, see in the formula. So here is the formula of uh, inventory turnover ratio. The formula is fairly simple. In the numerator is the cost of goods sold and uh, you divide it by the average inventories. So average inventory is nothing but the beginning inventory and the ending inventory. So the inventory at the start of the year, inventory at the end of the year, and you add it up and divide it by two. So that's how, you know, the inventory turnover ratio formula is defined as. Let's calculate uh, uh, inventory turnover ratio with the help of an example. Uh, we'll use a hypothetical example first, and then we'll move on to calculating inventory turnover ratio for Colgate. So uh, let's assume that the cost of goods sold or COGS is uh, let's say dollar sixty thousand for a company, okay. And the beginning inventory is dollar forty thousand, and the ending inventory is dollar twenty thousand. So what will be the average inventory? Average inventory will be 40,000 plus 20,000 divided by 2. So I can as well use this formula, which is the average formula. And what we'll get is uh, 30,000 as the average inventory. Okay, so we have the cost of goods sold. We also have the average inventory. So we can find the inventory turnover ratio. Fairly simple. This will be equal to cost of goods sold is 60,000 divided by 30,000. So we get the inventory turnover ratio as 2.0. So uh, my question to you is that uh, what does this signify? You know, think of it like what does two means to you, right? This basically means that a company is able to 
purchase the raw material work in progress make it as a finished good and sell it and this is what they are doing and they are doing it two times during the year and uh, so if you look at the worth the literal meaning of uh, inventory turnover ratio as 2.0 means that on an average the company is able to process the inventory how much amount of inventory this dollar 30000 worth of inventory two times during the year so what is the the whole uh, meaning of processing the inventory the processing the in of the inventory means that uh, you purchase the raw material work it goes through the work in progress and then it becomes a final uh, product and then you sell it right so after selling of that product uh, you know whatever the raw material cost and the essential associated costs you know the, those will be classified as cost of goods sold right so if the cost of goods sold is 60000 and average inventory is 30000 this means this cycle of processing to selling process has to take it has to be initiated two times during the year then only the cost of goods sold can become 60000 right so i hope you understood the literal meaning of inventory turnover ratios now uh, let me ask you another question how about uh, this inventory of 2.0 is it good or bad you know is it good or bad the answer actually is it depends on the industry so it depends on the industry if the inventory turnover ratio is uh, 2.0 has to be good then which industry it is from you know these now let me ask you another question whether this inventory turnover ratio of 2.0 whether it is good or bad see the answer lies in the industry it is all about so what do i mean by the industry let's say uh, if you are looking at uh, a company which is into retail okay retail or merchandising you know fashion mer merchandising okay so what happens within this industry you know whatever inventory that you hold you cannot hold it for a very very long time you can't you know keep it forever right you have to sell it pretty quickly because if you don't then they may become obsolete so industries like merchandising or retail you know they they have a inventory turnover ratio of usually 5 to 10 okay and uh, this is the typical uh, ratio of uh, retail and merchandising now uh, think of another let's let's discuss about fast food uh, mcdonalds how much do you think will be the inventory turnover ratio of mcdonalds what is the inventory for mcdonalds inventory would be of course uh, the raw material is the food right the raw uh, potatoes and the chicken and uh, uh, burgers and things like that so can they keep it for a long time can they keep it for 5 days 6 days 7 days no they can't do that you know every time they have to they buy this raw material they have to immediately process it or uh, you know they would try to minimize the holding time of you know this uh, food because the food is as such a perishable product so they can't uh, keep it uh, for a longer time mcdonalds as such has a very high inventory turnover ratios because of the said reasons and uh, if you calculate this it comes out to be around 300 plus i if i remember correctly it's a very high inventory turnover ratio for mcdonalds likewise for restaurants and others where inventory cannot be kept for a longer time i think for restaurants usually it is around 20 times okay so as i said uh, it depends on the industry whether it is good or bad on one side we saw an example of retail merchandising mcdonalds and other restaurants now there could be cases where inventory turnover ratios are very very small you know it could be as small as 2 or less than 2 as well and that depends on um, the industry you know how long the inventory takes so think of uh, large manufacturing companies you know manufacturing of turbines manufacturing of uh, cars you know all of these uh, usually take a lot of time for processing okay so uh, so think of uh, manufacturing as such so with this understanding of inventory turnover ratios let's move to the balance sheet and uh, calculate colgate's inventory turnover ratio so let's move uh, uh, to this row number 108 okay so this is where we are going to calculate the inventory turnover ratio so what all things is required uh, for inventory turnover ratio we require the cost of goods sold and we require the average inventory so since this is a balance sheet we'll get the average inventory on the top and for the cost of goods sold uh, we will actually link it from the income statement uh, we are doing the linking only for the reason that it's fairly easy for us to you know do the calculations here 
within this sheet. Okay, so the first step, I will actually link it to the cost of goods sold from the income statement. So here we have the cost of sales or the cost of goods sold that is 6072 for December 16. Okay, so I am linking this first all right, for all the years. And now we will calculate the inventory turnover ratio here. Okay, so for the first year, we can't uh, do so because uh, we need the average figures. Uh, but we'll start it from December 2017. For this, we require the formula cost of goods sold divided by average inventory. So this inventory turnover ratio is equal to cost of goods sold divided by average of the two years, right? So December 2016 and 17. So I'll scroll up. And these are the two years starting and ending. So let's do the average and enter. So what do we get here? We get 5.16 as the inventory turnover ratio of Colgate for December 2017. Okay, so we can copy and paste this formula to note the trends in the inventory turnover ratio. So what do you see? We see that the inventory turnover ratio is decreasing year over year. It was 5.16 and now it is 4.20. So what does this mean? Uh, this means essentially that uh, you know uh, Colgate's inventory is uh, is taking a bit longer to process and uh, convert into finished goods and finally into sales. Earlier they were doing processing the inventory 5.16 times during a year, but now they're doing it only for 4.20. So whether it is good or bad, you know, we can we need to look at the industry peers, etc. Uh, to say, you know, whether this is a good position or not. But just to give an example, you know, Procter & Gamble, inventory turnover ratio is somewhere around seven to eight times. Okay. As compared to Procter & Gamble, Colgate might not be doing very good. So uh, that's, that's the kind of interpretation that you can um, uh, deduct from its calculations. I hope you understood the inventory turnover ratio and how it is calculated, its interpretation and how it's applied on Colgate. Just to give an example, if you consider Procter & Gamble, Procter & Gamble's inventory turnover ratio is around 13.5. Now look at 13.5 of Procter & Gamble versus 4.20. Obviously, 4.20 is very small as compared to Procter & Gamble's of 13.5. It's almost three times. The inventory is being processed by Procter & Gamble's almost at a three times speed of what Colgate is doing currently. So this is the kind of interpretation you can have when you start comparing the inventory turnovers with its peers. So I hope you understood what is inventory turnover ratio, how it is calculated, its interpretation, as well as how um, you know we did the calculations with respect to Colgate case study. I hope you found this video to be useful. Please do like and share. And if you have any feedback or want to suggest a topic for any future video, then you may do so by writing about it in the comments section. Also, we come up with interesting videos on investment banking and core finance topics regularly. So if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please do so by clicking on the subscribe button below so that you can get the notification about our latest videos. I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a nice day.